Hello and welcome to my video. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make this beautiful ruscus. This is the large leaf variety and I think it's a wonderful complement to any flower that you make. So with the ruscus, as you can see, I've, I've done some preparation here and I've made my own veiners using the silly. Now there are tutorials on how to use that and make your own veiners as well. So I'm not gonna cover that in this particular video. So what we're gonna do is start with our flower paste. I've already colored my green and I've used um, a ginkgo by Edible Art. It's a powder color and I've just sprinkled the powder in there to make my lovely green that I've got here. So to start with, we don't need all of this. I'm gonna break it in half and then I'm gonna start rolling. So we need to get the wire on. So to do that, we're gonna roll and then gently press down. And then with my rolling pin, I press down in the middle and then roll out to one side. Make sure it's not sticking. And then from the other side, I'm gonna press down and roll out the other side. Now, if you're not very good at doing this, you might find that your ridge is too big. Um, it's not very often we get them too small, to be honest, but if it's too big, then the secret is put your rolling pin right in the middle of that center and roll out again. And that will instantly half the size of your, your little um, ridge there. So I'm gonna roll the top piece as well, because I hate this ridge going right the way to the end. It will really spoil the end of your leaf if you do that. Now this particular foliage is one of my favorites and I think it's because a lot of florists use it and a lot of the work I do, I'm very much inspired by florists and nature. So it's one of my favorites and it's so simple to do. It really bulks out an arrangement as well. If you have customers that don't want to pay a lot of money for something, this is really good because it bulks out the arrangement, makes it look wonderful, which is exactly what the florists use it for too, <laughs> which is really good. So just make sure that's not sticking. Now I'm not going as thin as normal. I mean, this is quite thin. I just lift it up as you can see, the ridge is there. It is quite thin, but it's not super thin that I can read through it. Um, I'm using a 28 gauge wire that I've already cut into three. So then I'm going to place my wire and gently push in that ridge. So I'm squeezing with my finger and my thumb. And this one's gonna go about halfway to there. And then we stop. Now that should stay on there. I never use edible glue or water or anything on my wires. When I do that, I end up with a big gooey mess at the end here, so I've just never done it. Now we get our veiner. We can put a little bit of cornflour on there, just so that it doesn't stick. And then if I place that over the top, let's turn it over actually, do it the other way around. And we're just lining up. I'm trying to make sure that that wire is in the center there. And then we press down firmly. Now when we lift, we hope it doesn't stick. And we have that lovely vein back and front, as you can see. It really does look beautiful. Now we have got a beautiful edge around there that we can use but I do want to show you, I have got a bigger one of these and the ones that I've prepared, some of them are bigger, but some of them are smaller and thinner. So I think it's good to have an array of all of them, to be honest. So what I'm going to do is make this one just a little bit thinner. And this is gonna be a baby one to go on the top of the stem. Now always make sure you roll up your paste and just pop it in an airtight container or under a bottle or somewhere where it's not gonna dry out. Now to soften the edges, you can use a pad if you've got one. I'm just gonna show you using the palm of my hand. And I'm just, not too much, I'm just gently thinning that out. So all I'm doing, I've got the, the rounded end of my rolling pin and I'm just gently rubbing it along. And that's it, that's all I'm doing. 
So it's not really frilly, as you can see, there's just a little bit of life there. Now I'm squeezing at the bottom, because these have got that really nice sharp bit, and then a little tweak at the end. And there we have it, there's our ruscus leaf. So that was really easy to make, wasn't it? Now I'm gonna talk you through a little bit of the um, the glaze. I'm not actually gonna do it because I'm worried it's gonna flick onto the camera. <laughs> so I'm gonna talk you through it. So confectioner's glaze, that's a glaze that you buy from any cake decorating shop or online. Um, and it's basically quite a sticky substance in here. Um, it's normally a sort of, um, a sort of browny color. Um, sometimes it can be clear, but normally they're a sort of browny color. Um, but when you glaze something, it will glaze and give it that lovely shiny effect. Now, what I want to do is just talk to you about when you are doing foliage. What speeds the process up a little bit for me personally is actually putting powder into my glaze. So can you see that? I know this is a really messy, messy one. And hence I haven't took the lid off because I want to show you the bottom. All down there is food colouring. So all I've done is I use autumn green because I think that's a lovely colour. Um, I put some of my powder into that glaze. So hence the big tub. Sprinkle a little bit of the powder in there and then give it a shake. Now what this will do, it will turn the glaze a different colour. Now this is excellent if you're doing variegated leaves because you can just paint a green shine going up the centre of them and it looks lovely. As you can see, it does go st get stuck at the bottom, so you need to give it a really, really good shake. But using coloured glaze, I've used, I've done it all my life, it's really, really good. And if I wanted a different colour glaze, I could just take a little bit of glaze, add a different colour powder. I don't use Pro Gels, I've only ever mixed powder with the glaze. And another bit of a warning for you um, is be careful how much you add as well. The more powder, you add to your glaze, the duller the glaze goes. Now, I think that's quite nice because sometimes I don't want it really, really shiny. Sometimes I want it in between. We used to dilute it down using a bit of dipping solution um, or alcohol, but I actually find using the powder is better. So what I would normally do, take the lid off and I get my leaf, I submerge it in so it's all covered, take it out now the messy bit is flicking it. So if I use this smaller one here to show you, what we need to do then, I get a cardboard box and I put it in my cardboard box and I shake it like this. Because what happens is all the excess will fly off, it'll land in the middle of your cardboard box and you're left with a beautiful leaf without drips. Because you have to be careful, it's quite a thick substance and you don't want drips or drains sort of hanging around on there at all. And I'm just looking to see <laughs> When you want something, it's never there, is it? But these, these have glazed beautifully. And can you see, they're not too shiny. Oh, there's a little bit of gathered glaze there, but not too much. Nothing that would be major, unless I was entering a competition, of course. So these are my leaves, and they're glazed now, and they're dry. So I'm going to line up my leaves. You can see they're all slightly different in size, which I think looks really, really nice. Now, if you do have any questions on the glaze, please don't hesitate to contact me. Um, you can get a spray glaze as well, which is okay, but you can't control the colour, um, which I like doing with the, the dipping glaze. So, come to taping up now. We're going to use a mid-green, and it's um, cut in half, ready to go. We stretch to release the glue. Now, I'm looking for the smallest one, so I've got two which are quite similar. I'm actually going to use the one that's more frilly because the one that's at the top that's popping out, that's the one that's all scrunched up and then it's releasing itself. So this one hasn't quite stretched out yet to look beautiful. So I'm gonna get my green tape and start taping. Now we can add an extra wire as well to make this really big. So if I was doing a bridal bouquet, for example, you know, sort of a two foot one, I would be adding extension wires to this. Now I'm going to mix, um, tape down to about, about an inch. And then I get the next one down, gently fold it, and then bring that in. And it's kind of opposite the last one, so they're facing each other just a little bit lower down. 
and then we start taping. Now again, if it doesn't want to stick, a little bit of corn flour will help you along the way. And what I always do, a good habit, is just to pull it down. And what that will do is, it will get really nice, neat joints here. If you're entering competitions or doing exclusive work, you want it to be really neat. You don't want to have rough edges. Now I'm looking, I think that one's the next size down. And I'm introducing that. And they will spin around, but you can go and turn them back again. This one's gonna to be to the side now. So as you can see, I'm changing the angle slightly. I've made a kind of almost triangle shape with the way they're facing at the moment. And then go down a little bit more. And again, I'm leaving about an inch in between each one. And then I'm adding the big leaf. Now on a stem, when I'm doing an arrangement, I will normally do stems of either four or five. I think anything more than that um, tends to get lost in between the flowers because you do want the flowers to be the main point. You don't want the foliage taken over, but the foliage is a complement to any flower that you make. So I'm just being careful not to break them. <laughs> don't want to break them. So I could again add an extension there. And if I just show you this one I have, and you can see there's a much, much longer wire. But this one I want shorter because I want to show you popping it into a little vase, like so. And we break that off. Now, as you can see, the stem is very, very rigid. Now, you don't ever get foliages that are very, very rigid, unless it's eucalyptus. That's the, the exception. So I always say, think of a little ballerina dancing, give it a bit of movement. Now people get scared of doing this. So I say over exaggerate the movement first and then straighten it back up again. Because I'm sure you know that it's really hard to straighten a wire once it's bent. So actually by doing that, can you see it just gives it that little bit of life that I think looks really, really nice. And there we have our ruscus. How quick and easy was that? Now this is just one variety of ruscus and it's one of my favourites because as I've said, it kind of bulks out an arrangement. Um, and if I bring over my flowers here, all I've got is a, is a little posh bottle here, a little pink gin bottle. I've put some roses in and then I'm just going to add these. And I just think it really adds and finishes them off. And we can bend them and twist them to make them look lovely. But that instantly adds impact to any beautiful flower that you make. I think foliage is overlooked. It's very, very important to have a really nice foliage to complement your beautiful flowers. And there we have it, our beautiful ruscus. Quite quick to make, something that you could probably do while you were sitting in front of the TV. But as you can see, wonderful compliment to any flower that you make. Thanks for watching.